The Komodo dragon is one of the most feared animals on the face of the earth. Weighing up to 150 lel bees, 70 kilo, growing up to 10 feet long and possessing venom glands, the enormous reptile is a formidable predator. But could they survive in the Amazon rainforest? Komodo dragons are endemic to the Indonesian islands of Komodo, Rinka, Flores, and Gilimotang. There are thought to be less than 1,400 individuals left in the wild, and they are listed as endangered on the IUCN Red List. They are carnivores and mostly consume carrion, but they are adept hunters too, stealthily moving in on their prey before ambushing them. Despite popular belief, Komodo dragons don't aim to merely maim their prey and then follow it until it succumbs to its wounds. Instead, they try to kill it then and there, using a combination of devastating lacerations and blood loss to subdue it. Small dragons eat insects, birds, and other reptiles, while fully grown adults take on larger animals. Their diet on the Indonesian islands consists largely of ungulate prey, such as Javan rusa, wild pigs, and water buffalo. These species were introduced to the islands in the early Holocene. Before that, during the Pleistocene, the Komodo dragon's preferred prey was the elephant-like Stegodon. In the Amazon rainforest, Komodo dragons would have an abundance of mammalian and reptilian prey to eat. Juveniles are adept climbers and may climb into the branches to catch their prey. Larger dragons can stand on their hind legs, using their muscular tails for support as they reach into the trees. Various species of monkeys, sloths, a variety of birds and iguanas are just some of the tree-dwelling animals that could be taken by Komodo dragons in the Amazon. Juvenile Komodo dragons would also escape rainforest predators by hiding in the canopy. If the jungle isn't too dense, Komodo dragons may be able to use it to their advantage by concealing themselves in the undergrowth. They would be able to stealthily move in on their prey and detect it using their incredible sense of smell. They are said to be able to detect carrion up to six miles away, which would serve them well in the jungle where the line of sight might be obscured. They could hone in on injured prey or carrion and locate it with ease. Peccaries, capybaras, and even tapirs could replace the wild pigs they are used to in Indonesia, while several species of deer, such as red and grey brocket and white-tailed deer, would also be familiar to them. The discovery of the Komodo dragon's venom glands has led to disputes among scientists. The gland secretes a toxic mixture of proteins that inhibit blood clotting, lower blood pressure, cause muscle paralysis, and induce hypothermia, all of which lead to shock and loss of consciousness in envenomated prey. However, some scientists have said that this venom is not used to capture prey. Instead, the main factors leading to death are blood loss and shock. But the venom glands could come in handy in the Amazon, where they could be used for something that isn't necessary on the Lesser Sunda Islands, a defense against predators. While adult Komodo dragons are apex predators on their Indonesian islands, the food chain may be shuffled up a little if they were to be let loose in the Amazon. Young Komodo dragons are eaten by adult dragons, feral dogs, wild boars, civet cats and snakes, but adults aren't hunted by anything due to their large size and ferocious temperament. However, in the Amazon, even the adults would have to be on the lookout for any potential predators, as they would not be at the top of the food chain. On land, jaguars prowl the dense vegetation of the Amazon rainforest. With the strongest bite relative to size of all the big cats, jaguars can crunch down on prey with an impressive 1 500 psi of bite force. They would be able to crack the skull of a Komodo dragon if they were stealthy enough to attack without being seen. They're obligate carnivores, and while jaguars eat a range of animals from peccaries to marsh deer to turtles and caimans, their favorite prey is capybaras and giant anteaters. However, jaguars are not the most feared predators of the Amazon. In the waters, black caimans can grow up to 6 meters, 20 feet long. They consume similar prey to jaguars, such as tapirs, capybaras and peccaries, but they have been reported to eat jaguars themselves too. They make for a dangerous trip to the water's edge when taking a drink. It wouldn't be something the dragons would be used to. And that's not the only predator that jaguars fall prey to in the South American jungle. The green anaconda is the heaviest snake in the world, and they have been known to wrap their coils around jaguars and eat them whole. There are many dangers the Komodo dragons would be exposed to in the jungle. They could certainly be on the caimans and the anaconda's list of prey should they call the Amazon home. 
As a result, they would have to change their behavior to survive. Many prey species are cautious when feeding, as this is when they are vulnerable. They often feed in herds and sound alarm calls when danger is detected. Some even rely on other species to alert them to a potential predator, such as deer relying on the alarm calls of some birds. Komodo dragons may be able to detect incoming predators with their incredible sense of smell, and their venom glands may prove deadly to an animal brave enough to attack them. Some animals sleep in groups, with one member always on the lookout for danger. Komodo dragons are largely solitary animals. However, if they shifted down on the food chain in the Amazon, they may be safer living together in groups. Maybe they could team up with their lifelong partners, which could enable them to keep a lookout for each other. On Indonesia's Lesser Sunda Islands, Komodo dragons prefer the tropical forests. They can walk for several miles a day, but tend to stay close to the place where they hatch. The tropical forest of the Amazon could provide the right sort of habitat for these enormous lizards, as it wouldn't be too dissimilar to what they are used to. To maintain their body temperature, Komodo dragons dig burrows in the ground. They use their powerful claws to dig these up to three meters wide and sleep in them. Conserving their body heat in this way means that dragons don't have to commit themselves to prolonged periods of basking in the early morning sun. The climate of the Lesser Sunda Islands is similar to that of the Amazon, both are tropical and hot. However, the average temperature across the Indonesian islands is more consistent than the Amazon, which has peaks in temperature during the dry season. It is likely the Komodo dragons would take advantage of the hotter periods during the drier months and be more active during that time. The only concern about Komodo dragons living in the Amazon regarding climate would be the humidity and amount of rainfall. Although parts of the Indonesian islands are tropical, the giant lizards aren't used to the wet conditions they would experience in the Amazon. The reproductive habits of Komodo dragons are unusual for two reasons. The first is that males and females tend to form pair bonds and therefore mate for life. This is rare for lizards. Komodo dragons only ever come together for feeding and mating. The second characteristic is that female Komodo dragons can reproduce through parthenogenesis. This means that they don't require outside fertilization from a male and can produce offspring without mating. This could allow a small population of Komodo dragons let loose in Amazonia to become established and grow their numbers easily. It is thought that this unusual behavior allows the reptiles to establish populations on isolated islands. However, parthenogenesis reduces genetic variation, which makes the species vulnerable to environmental pressures such as climate change and disease. If Komodo dragons could survive the wetter conditions and fluctuating temperatures of the Amazon rainforest, then it is possible they could do well there. There would be plenty for them to eat and plenty of space for them to establish and maintain a territory. Introducing such a large predator into the ecosystem would certainly shake things up a bit, and there would be competition for food with other predators in the area. Their diet would overlap with other animals. If prey species could maintain their numbers, then the Amazon could provide food security for the dragons. But what do you think? Do you think Komodo dragons could survive in the Amazon rainforest? That's all for today. If you enjoyed this video, don't forget to like, subscribe and share it with your friends. You can also leave a comment with what you would like to see in the following videos. Thanks for watching. See you next time.